Hello again and welcome to Vance Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. Happy June. Happy June. We Yay. made it. It's summer. It is. Well, well, it's not, not officially really summer, but until the 20th. Oh my God, you wouldn't have thought it was summer this weekend, though. I know. How crazy cold was that? I was like, wow, I can't. It, Thank God. All my little Facebook memories were like, you were camping four years ago and you were camping seven years ago. And I'm like, no way would I. I would have turned. We would have come home. Yeah, well, you know. That's how it is. It was me. funny because my friends who um, supply my meat uh, mm. up at Barda yeah. Farm used to do a little festival this time of oh. year. And I was looking through my memories and I was like, oh, right, it's actually rained, it's, it's snowed, yeah. it's been 80 degrees. So, you know, yeah. it's New usually, Hampshire, it's New England. Wait usually, five this past weekend isn't always Memorial Day weekend, first of all, but this time, you know, so many years ago. Um, I, I guess it always would be, I don't know, whatever. Um, <laughs> We usually are camping in where because it's usually our where? first where um, it's usually our first campsite camp camping trip because yes. it's the one where you go and you figure out if the camper still all works. Ah, okay. <laughs> and like, did you remember to you know do X, Y, and Z? But I am I am not a just camper, not a tenter. I like. I like have a new real to, roof. a new to me camper, new to us camper. Um, it's a big old hot mess, but I'm re renovating it. <laughs> I'm redecorating the inside. Um, this week, I think I'll put a new floor in. Nice. Yes. We'll see. Tammy it's, showed it to me. It needs some work. But it if needs anyone some can make it work, well, it's, it's getting Tammy. there. It's getting there. I just, it, it, it was cheap, and campers are very difficult to find. Yes, um, because there is a shortage on the market yes. of anything that might actually be useful, which is good because yeah. that is showing us actually yeah, where. So we know which one we really want. Like Dan really wants a particular camper. So now I'll just look for that. And when we find that, I'll sell this. That's the reason I need to make this one look, seem nice. Ah, okay. So Anyways, we always got so, a plan, um, but not a plan for the show. No, we just totally <laughs> wing this. If you don't haven't figured out that we just come here and talk, it's so crazy. Tammy's going to tell me what she's mad about, well, and then I'm, I'm going to really tell you mad. What I'm I just mad about. laugh at things. So you know, I opened my online edition of the Union Leader. Uh, Carla gets the paper version. I get the electronic version. Um, and the front page, not just a story in the newspaper, but the front page is about. Lovers Lane Coral, neighbors vow to fight for access to shortcut. And I'm like, oh, what's that all about? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna summarize what I think it's all about. People in the North End need to get a grip on reality. Um, I or don't at know. least start to understand property rights. Well, I mean, I don't know if you all have a special way of living up there in 03104, but the rest of us deal with life all the time. Um, so apparently the, um, off of Union Street, Upper Union, where the street is very wide and the houses are very pretty. There's a bunch of streets that go off, if you're going north, that go off to the right. Um, two of them are, um, I'm totally driving. <coughs> something me. Walnut, North Walnut, something Walnut, Walnut Hill Road, and um, another one, it doesn't really matter. But there's two, and most of the streets connect to each other down the way. You know, you could go down this way and take a left and get to the next one. Well, these two sets of streets, this little group of streets and this little group of streets, there's no connecting street. Oh, the horrors. So apparently for years, there's a shortcut. There's been a path and a shortcut and people have been walking through and biking through and Joyce Craig jogs through and they drove the Bearcat or whatever. The SWAT team went through the other day when they- Man, the SWAT team's out of control. Uh, whatever, they're bored too. Um, they're definitely they're not, not putting it, it all on the police law. It basically was a path that apparently, according to the article, um, the city planning department did say that back in 1898, there was a plan to put a street, This and it never happened. So it's basically an easement. Eh, there's a city has an easement for underneath the path for water and stuff. Okay. But there is no actual easement. So who owns it? Well, there was a family, that a woman that owned it, and okay. she died, and their family, it was a large, I mean... I can't really show on lot TV, but it's a large lot. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it's big. Walnut Hill and Whitford Street. These are the two streets. So there's a large parcel of land, and there's this path that goes through it. Oh, okay. That is kind that of in the middle of their yard. Right. So these, <laughs> the family sold the property, I think, to somebody else, who then subdivided it and sold it off into three parcels. Oh, Okay. Well, one of the gentlemen who I think currently lives on a, in a house on Walnut Hill bought one of the parcels for about a hundred, hundred. I think two of the parcels sold for like a hundred thousand dollars a piece, oh, wow. right? He put up no trespassing signs. 
Which he's which he's allowed to right. do. That's and how property like, rights work. Right. If you own it, you can say what you can do with it unless someone else has a stronger contractual right. But literally, the neighbors are outraged. And I, I read it, and they're, they, they're starting a social media campaign, and everybody says they're like hate being piled on this guy who's lived in this neighborhood for years because he bought a piece of property and has decided... I don't really want people walking through it. Now, look, I can understand that people will be like, well, we've had this way of doing things forever. Okay, life, life goes on, things change. Things change. I and mean, people, I mean, think of all of your neighborhoods. There was, a, you know, that little property on the point of Donald Street and Milford Street where they built the three condos. I'm sure the people around that neighborhood were like, wait, there never used to be condos there. That used to be an empty lot. Or the houses on South Main Street that, you know, look like they've been there forever, but there used to be a big lawn there. You know, like, life goes on. Apparently, when they're planning this monstrosity of a school, <laughs> they have no problem suggesting places that would totally disrupt neighborhoods, eliminate parks and areas and things like that. But apparently, people in the North End get front page union leader coverage because, oh my God, if I want to get from Walnut Hill to Whitford, I would have to go to Union Street and there's no sidewalk on Union Street. So my life is all in dishevel and I'm going to go after people on Facebook. Yeah, we need to figure out better ways to, to respond to these things. I think the first thing is we need to remind people that <laughs> the reason why we have property rights is it is the cleanest, simplest, yep. most equitable way to figure out disputes. So if we clearly understand what's yours is yours and what's mine is mine, then yep. it makes it really easy when you have to mitigate or figure these things out. Now, it's not to say that the guy who owns the property couldn't be persuaded to be like, oh, okay, I see your guy's point. Let me reconsider or let me okay, Or just pile on approach. him and that'll help change his mind. Right. But you don't get to say, well, I'm inconvenienced, so I want to take a portion of your property rights because now what's yours is mine as well. And that's why, you know, we talk about property rights all the time yep. on this show because they're really important. And I think everyone's kind of forgotten that Basics. that is like the basic well, notion mean, of stuff. If it's yours, you get to decide what you do with you know, it. Not your neighbors, not the zoning board, not anyone else. Well, and I That's think not it's, how it's I, supposed I, to work. In this particular instance, because we do live in a very litigious world, so he has owns this parcel of property that has a people cutting through it right now. So when uh, one of these neighbors from 03104 who are cutting from, you know, whatever street there, Walnut Hill to Whitford Street or jogging or doing whatever, falls and trips over a root on the path and sues the guy who now owns the property. What's, you know, his insurance has to pay for that. So it's his property. It, it, well, it's his property, period. So, so if he wants to let I people just go it, through there, he can. The, if he doesn't, he can. And I guess the real reason, I just, I just thought it was like, was that it made front page front above page the news. fold story because apparently there's no crime and apparently there's no nothing happening in Manchester other than, you know. Well, you wouldn't people. say that from the I, number of like SWAT raids oh with my. the bear cat that we're seeing, oh you know. My. I mean, when we when we tried to push back against this militarization of the police, one of the things I said was, it's a, it's a quote, a famous saying, right, where, you know, if everything... Uh, if all you have is a hammer, then everything looks like a nail. Yeah. So, you know, we were basically saying if you give this militarized equipment to the police, they will start to use it for things that it's not really appropriate for. So what have we seen? Probably in the last two weeks, I stopped counting because I just well, I get there was, so mad. It seems like every day three, somebody's shooting somebody. Three or, or four SWAT raids with the Bearcat. All of them, I believe, two were more. actually wellness checks. So again, can we get to the point where we are not sending militarized tanks to upset mentally unstable people's houses and thereby escalating things where we're locking down neighborhoods? Like, you know, I say this all the time, Tammy, I'm going to say it again. We, our destiny is whatever future we're creating. Right. So if you want a future with soldiers on the streets and military vehicles everywhere and cops shooting mentally 
unstable people, then let's continue on this track. If we don't want that, then we have to start to change. We have to reform. We have to get rid of the violence and we have to figure out decent human ways with persuasion and words for people to come to conclusions. The state is a system of bullying hmm. because it forces you to do things that you don't necessarily want to do. And I think, you know, if the year teaches us, this past year has taught us one thing, it's that. Now, before we change to the schools, I do want to say this. You keep talking, I'm just I gonna... was laughing because today's in the health section of the newspaper. For every single person who is even slightly unhealthy back home, who wore a mask, or if you smoke, or make choices that are not the healthiest, and you wore a mask over the past year. Here is what the CDC says you have to do now. from now on. And if you wore a mask and you thought the CDC is the be all and end all, here's what you have to commit to doing over the next year. You have to make lifestyle changes, such as eating a health, heart healthy diet, getting regular physical exercise, achieving and maintaining a healthy weight and limiting your alcohol consumption. So I look forward to everyone who uh, called me a murderer for a year right. to uh, get on that program because I got on that program, which is why I didn't have to wear a mask right. or worry about my immune system or anything. So I look forward to everyone coming on board with all of that. Thank you. Tirade over. <laughs> tirade? That's, I think that's legit. I mean, we have been saying for 18 months or whatever now that, you know, maybe... 63 weeks, I believe, to flatten the curve. Weeks. Here we go, um, folks. You know, Again, get healthy. you are making your own future. Be, you know, be a better you physically, right. and then you won't have to worry about getting so sick so often. No, so I mean, it, and here's the thing. It's all choices, right? right. So you have to actually go... Wow, the journey is, part of life is actually, obviously living, that is the point of life, right? But it's also what quality of living do you have right. and what can you do? And part of the journey of life is actually being mindful about how you are taking care of your corpus, how you're taking care of your body, the choices you're making. So again, if you're someone, and I see you guys all the time, out there with your mask on, pulling your mask down, having a ciggy. I don't get that. Looking at me like, how dare you walk around? And then pulling your mask up. I'm like, you know what? Go pound sand. There. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm not okay with the stupid part. I'm saying I'm okay with say, saying go pound sand because it is, um, it, it, it just, it's illogical. And it's, I like to be logical. I am thrilled to but see. But it's not even illogical. The point is, I don't want to judge your lifestyle choices. Right. You know what? So if stop you judging be mine. A smoker, I don't genuinely care. You're probably going to shorten your life. I used to be a smoker. I get it. It's an addiction. All of that. But here's the point if you want me to pay for your medical, which yeah. is what socialized medicine is, you are creating an incentive for people like us. <laughs> to start to care a lot about yeah. what you're doing with your life and your body and all of that. And that's not the model I wanna live in. I wanna live in a freedom model where you are free to do that and then, you know, get lung cancer and die, but don't make me pay for your poor choice. So, unrelated to Manchester, but I'll just throw this out there. So yesterday, Dan and I, oh my God, we drew, took a decided to drive. Let's go eat someplace other than where, you know, other usually, than where we usually go. So we headed out to Tuckaway Tavern, oh, nice. right? Because I've never been, right? And I hear don't good things. Really good lobster roll. I don't know because <laughs> there was a two-hour wait for a yes, table, and I was that's like, it. yeah, I don't wait anywhere for two hours for food. And people are like, oh, it's worth it. I'm like. No, not really. <laughs> so we went to this uh, really, really good barbecue place over in what we call the center of the universe in Epping. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Really good. But anyways, we went for a drive and we listened to Dave Rubin in the Rubin Report. And he had this gentleman on and I failed to know, remember his name. But he was a 72-year-old um, black man who is um, from... Um, Brown University in Rhode Island. So that caught Dan's interest because Brown University is like a liberal liberal bastion, right? Um, and he's come around, he's an economist, and he, you know, 
said was talking about all sorts of things including um critical race theory and i lost the reason why i brought him up what were you talking about judging people yeah health choices freedom um mm. lunch what you had for lunch yeah well whatever <laughs> he was very interesting because it was from a black man's perspective and he's like look you gotta, um, you can't, oh, I know what it was. He was saying, talking about reparations. And he said, so back in the day, back in like the Re Reagan's era, I believe, um, we did pay $20,000 to each um, Japanese American who was actually interred. interred. Not all Japanese Americans, just the ones that actually had their, their livelihood up, upheaval back in, you know, back in the day. Um, so now the current discussion would be, well, everybody's throwing around the word reparations, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, I'm perfectly all fi fine with paying, you know, 20000 or the equivalent of $20,000 to anybody who was actually a slave. I don't think there's any slaves still alive. Not in America. There are in Africa. Right. Enslaved but, by other black people, you know, so it's not really a race issue. No, it's, it's a, a it's control a, right. issue. So... Now it would be, well, we would just, you know, the theory is we'd just pay reparations to everybody based on their skin color. And I'm like, and he was just, from a black man's perspective, was talking about how absolutely absurd it is. And not only that, but can we then, if we did, it would cost like $4 trillion to give every black person $100,000 or something, right? And he goes, okay, but then we stop. Right? Then we stop. So we end all, the all welfare. Every, right, everything stops. And Dave was like, right, because none of that will ever change, and then we'll just have to pay for something else. Right. So the reality is, is like, you know. It, Look, for me, it boils down to a mindset, right? So my, my, my family lineage comes from, you know, the Dutch who lived in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So the Dutch went, they were traders, they were pretty cool, you know. Right. There was an enslavement, all of that. And then, you know, the British came. The British, that's never a good sentence. So my great-grandmother was in a British concentration camp in 1903, where 25% of all Boer women and children died. Okay? So I'm like... I don't know, is the crown of England going to pay me reparations? Right, I mean, where would it stop? Uh, I moved I'm... to America with $7,000 and a suitcase. Can I have some more? Uh, can I, you my... know, get a handout? Did someone help me get my where I My grandfather's from Ireland. I'm sure he Irish didn't have people, it. You know? Irish need not apply. Can I get $25,000? I think, you know, I think if we're going to look at history, then... Uh, Jewish people. So We should give gotta, all the Jewish people money. You know, so you could either look at it that way, which is a oppressor-oppressed mindset, mm -hmm which only Leads works to more. in the favor <laughs> of, the of the oppressor who is trying to convince you you are a victim right. and you are oppressed and that somehow the oppressor who did it to you is going to solve this problem for you. So the question you have to ask yourself is who benefits from telling you you're a victim and that you can't manage your own life? The person trying to control you. Yes. Which is what this gentleman was talking about, about how... In, he, he's not really a political person, but he said, we're lying to people. He said, I thought the best chance for, um, you know, more, less racial tension was when Barack Obama, Obama became president. And he said, and he blew it. He did all the things that he, he missed doing all the good mm. things that he could have done as being the first black president. And instead, he went right for the fear mongering. And now they're literally, I mean, you hear Nancy Pelosi and then you hear him say, they're going to string you up. They want to hang you. It's, it's, it's Who do bananas. you know that wants to harm black people? I mean, I mean I'm pretty on. sure there isn't even an active, you know, white nationalist. K Not K a K real like one. All these things, right? I think there's probably like a... a, a group less of... Less than a thousand people yes. in America who are that nutty, right? Right. Half of them are probably actually government agents infiltrating and, and you know, we know they go in and they, they just you know, take the poor, mentally in incapacitated people, and you can look. I mean, go go Google this for yourself if you don't believe me. There are, it's well documented that there are tons and tons of domestic terrorist cases that have been caught where it is literally Some a, a mentally 
uh, unstable uh, person. Not even unstable. They're usually um, um, mentally deficient. Right. Like they have really they, right. low IQs. And then these state agents come in and, and they're like, them. oh, you should go bomb something. Or here's a truck full of fertilizer. If anyone ever offers you a truck full of fertilizer. Don't take it. Just say no to fertilizer. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's 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 so so really, you know, you've got to look at this dynamic and be like, why are who who benefits when you pit people against each other? And you know how clear it is to me what's happening. I just rewatched um, Thirty Rock, right? So okay. the Tina yeah, Fey show with yeah. Bolden, and like the premise of the show is she's sort of a lefty, yep. and he's a Republican, you know, and he's the boss of the network, and she writes this comedy show. So that's sort of the setup, right? And it's a very funny show, amongst other things. I think this is an entirely legitimate question: Where are the baby pigeons? <laughs> think that was the funniest line it was just a throwaway sure, line in the show and it's like why pigeons. do you never see baby that pigeons? is interesting you don't see baby pigeons. okay but uh, that being an aside so the humor in that show which was probably made good well, 15 years ago at this easily. stage probably maybe even longer um all the humor in that show which is the pitted like laugh out loud isn't that ridiculous is left where, where right humor now? is literally what you know, Facebook and Twitter yep. and all those things look like. It's it's just these ridiculous meme voices yeah. that should be should humorous be abs- right. because and, it's and it now ridiculous. Are, now have become reality. Yeah, and the, it's just the, movie, the normal now. The movie Idiocracy. Yes. Like when you watch Idiocracy, you think, well, that, that we could never become this stupid. No. But and then there's things can. where you're like, oh, my God, I live in Idiocracy. Yeah. All the time. And, All and, the time. And so the question becomes also like, how do we, how do we stop this? I think the number one thing, and I do think this is something that where libertarians excel and both other sides can kind of figure it out. Just laugh a little. Yes, take Everyone's it all with taking, a grain of salt. Everything is not personal. Everything's so... Everything doesn't mean you hate somebody. Everything doesn't mean somebody hates you. And, and it's just, you know, when... Smile when, more often. It doesn't ever hurt. But when you take the stakes away from it, like when you take whatever's happening in your head where you think all this, like, oh, this is happening stuff, and you just stop and you go, well, what is my reality? My reality is the sun is shining. Yep. I have a roof over my head. Yep. You know, I can... Flower. Hours are blooming, everything's you know, And then life. you go, okay, really, we're not in this no. race war. Uh, people don't hopefully want to really murder each other. Again, it is that messaging that is coming out from the statists, from the control freaks, from the politicians who are manipulating you to your detriment, and you should stop. You should listen to voices of people who are reasonable and who are really Small. just trying to make the world a better place. And that starts with you and yep. your choices and your lifestyle. And so that's what I got. So when you said baby uh, pigeons, yes. <laughs> onto, a happy, onto a happy subject, um, you can watch, um, you know how we had the, the cam to watch the raptor, falcon? the falcon. No, what, the peregrine. falcon was in New York. No, the peregrine falcons. They're peregrine. Oh, they were? I think yeah. so, yeah. Anyways, the, watch the, them hatch and you watch them grow and everything right here in Manchester. Well, this isn't right in Manchester, but it is in New Hampshire. Um, there is There are loon cams. Now, I don't know about you, but um, I love listening to the loon. I, that's my goal. I just want to live someplace where I can take a cup of coffee in the morning and go down in the water and hear, oh, 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 Yeah, they're whatever. beautiful. And they're amazing to watch. And I love when we're kayaking and they, you know, they come up and whatnot. And so I only recently learned, because we were up at Lake Winnie a couple of weeks ago, and they had a loon book, and we yeah. saw one in the water, and I was like, oh. They're amazing, they aren't they? So they sit really yeah. low in the water. So if you're looking out over a lake, and you're like, is that a duck or a loon? You can tell by how low yeah. the loons are in the water. And they're huge. Yeah. Like, they look, they don't look so huge until they swim up, ne- they happen to pop up, and their heads are like this, and you're like, oh, <laughs> mama. But, um... But I love watching them. Anyway, so this morning, it was in the Union Leader, um, the Loon Preservation uh, Committee, El- yeah, Loon Preservation Committee, which I joined today for $40 to help nice. protect the, the loons. Um, I basically get a sticker for that, and they get $40. <laughs> and she but, gets to brag on that. I get to, well, I was like, <laughs> well, I've become that lady. I'm going to host barbecues and join the Loon Preservation Committee. But why not? We should right. do I, I, and it's something, the things we're passionate about. It's something about. that means a lot to me. So um, you can go to loon.org, 
and they have the loon camp. <laughs> that sounds like I know. Dan said so this is kind of like <laughs> this is a good subject matter. Um, but they have um, what happened is they build these ne- not the loons, the loon people. They build these floating nests because boats and whatnot disturb the nests, and the loons are very very. Um, they're territorial. Not, they're ter- not. Well, and they're not um, very protected, and they they're diminished, and we have to help try to sur- make them survive here in New Hampshire. Um, so I thought, oh, I'm gonna do this loon cam like I've looked a million times, and there's gonna be you know a lake, and there's no lo- nope right there loon sitting on a nest. So I was oh, like, wonderful. so go you can go to loon.org and um, click on webcam and watch the loons peacefully. Oh, that's cool. Repro- uh, nesting and we'll see if any of the eggs survive and all that good stuff so that was my fun thing. and i put my bird feeder up and now i am learning so much about i learned birds. something this week so I, I was at the show vin's house and they used to have all sorts of different bird feeders and it makes a mess and you have to be okay. oh my god the squirrels yeah, you have to be okay there. with it <laughs> she switched to all suet she gets all the woodpeckers and everything oh wow Ooh, so i'm gonna put some suet feeders out this week I have some. I'm just going to put them in a different spot. She says they don't make any mess, and they get so many beautiful birds. I haven't from. gotten any hummingbirds yet. I haven't put out any hummingbird food. I, I did put out some, some uh, red, uh, like the, a red one yep, with yep, sugar water. Yeah, only sugar water. Never use honey, all these different things. Just no. plain old sugar Ooh, water. And also, just for folks back home who are looking for good sugar alternatives, I just discovered date syrup. Dates so I had never very, heard of that. Um, so it's a substitute for honey and yeah. for uh, maple syrup. It yeah. tastes really yummy, yeah. and it has a much, much lower uh, glycemic yep. hit. Yep. So it came, you know, in my Amazon package last week, and Date I took syrup? a little taste, and I was like, ooh, mm, this like could be like a game changer. Yeah. Mm. Highly recommend. There you go. Um, well, the camera's saying... You know, we're done within that two-minute warning thing. Um, so we didn't even get to the schools, but we're no. going to build it at the youth center on the north side. Yeah, why not? Let's why just not? build There's it between. Maybe we can build it Actually, between we shouldn't build Whitford. it. Let's start there. <laughs> we can build it between Whitford Street and, <laughs> and, you and just take out all those houses, and we won't have to worry about the path anymore. Uh, um, if you have any questions, suggestions, opinions, recipes, whatever, uh, you can email them to manchtalk at gmail.com. Ooh, you can speaking fi- of recipes, can I plug yeah. my, my, my cooking show? Of course. Freedom Nom Nom. Uh, I started a cooking show. I've done five episodes. They're all rustic keto food, so it's real food made with liberty and love. Check it out on my YouTube Freedom channel. Freedom Nom Nom. That's N-O-M-N-O-M yes. dot com. But it, well, it's no, it's, oh. it's just on my website, carlagarrick.com. Okay. There you, you go. That's the easier. I'm there. like, where do you have to go? And Carla you Garrick. spell that way. And that's how you can <laughs> check out Carla's book. And um, plant sale on the 12th in, at the animal shelter. And I think that's it. That's it. Enjoy your weekend. Have a great time, guys. Bye. Bye.